Two words, mock draft. We've got it on today's episode. Don't miss a minute. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in. Tuesday, May 21st, Mike the Fantasy Hitman right. I'm Andy Holloway. Jay Grizz back in the building. Uh Uh-oh. Get it out of the way. I have no idea what you're talking about. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, well, (laughs) look, um, mock draft episode today, sure to be (laughs) interrupted. I do feel better about the fact that that's been handled. It's sensational. I enjoy the drop very much. Uh, We knew that Jay Grizz was going to be here today. Yes. So so the fact that you guys had not upgraded to like some sweet graphic stuff happening on the YouTube. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Pretty disappointed. That's Ketron's fault. (laughs) So no Jason this week. Pretty disappointed. Not disappointed in that. Oh, right? no, that's great. Yeah. So uh, Jason is uh, enjoying a week away from the show before things get real. Uh, we've got 11 days until the Ultimate Draft Kit is out, which is exciting. So if you order it before June 1st, it's more exciting because you get the lowest price and you get some discounts. Uh, you get like a $10 gift card to Fantasy Champs and some money for our shop ballers and a free digital copy of, of our book. And the lowest price, like I said. So ultimatedraftkit.com. It releases in eleven days, Mike. I am ready. The ultimate tease. <laughs> uh Mike and I are gonna be doing a oh, head to head mock draft on the show today. I am very excited for this. The um if you hadn't noticed, the the free rankings are live on the fantasyfootballers.com right now. Yes. So our the three of us have our projections done, but why I have not done really is any mock draft. No, me neither. Or I like no. I'm not really a best ball bro. You know, shout out to all those the DJs who are are hitting the uh, in, in the, the gutters. Streets. Yeah, you're you're in it right now. I get it. But so I like ADP. I got I got no idea, man. Well, yeah, I'm. It'll be fun. And you and I are drafting at the two and three spot on today's mock draft. So, you know. Be careful with your snipes because they're coming right back around to you in the next round. So that'll be fun doing that today. We've got some news to talk about. A reminder, you can follow the show over on X. Now, you saw this. Yeah, man. yep. Even the domain it's is o- x.com. It's it's official. We are X. Yeah, I guess. Whatever, man. Throw it's, it up, Mike. <laughs> it's just like, yeah. On, on I mean, Twitter. it's done. Follow us on Twitter. I saw the explanation, which was, uh, you know, it's long gone are the days of like, what was the original character limit? Uh, 126? 140? Wait, one. I'm seeing nods, but we're saying different, <laughs> we're saying different numbers. Yeah, I, yeah. There's, I thought it was 240. No, that, that was the that expansion. That was the expansion. Go, I, man, do, do the uh, one, 140. Kyle, Kyle says yeah. 140. So, Who knows? Whatever. It was, it was very small. The yeah. explanation was that, you know, it's no longer a place with little, short, bird-like tweets of 140 characters. Now it's the place for everything, which is why X. You know what I mean? <laughs> okay. X encapsulates all <laughs> it, I mean, at the FF Ballers. If any social media site is just crushing Code Red Mountain Dew right now, yeah. it's X. X. It's all extreme. Right. Uh, at Andy Holloway. At Follow Jason us on FFL. Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> at FF Hitman. And there you go. The community's join the foot.com, the free discord channel, ballers, discord.com. Mike, you're shaking your head still. Uh, you'll never recover. <laughs> it's a very <laughs> short domain. Very expensive. It is. You know? Yeah. X. I mean, it's just so cool. Yeah. So cool. That's what I'm, that's what I'm trying to say. All right. Into the news we go. 
news and notes from around the league. <laughs> Mike, prepare yourself. Me, 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 me. David Johnson. Oh, woo, woo, woo. One more time. One I know. more time for the man. I know. The it, man, it, the myth, the legend. I needed to let it sit there because David Johnson has officially retired from the NFL after, look, they say eight seasons, but it feels like three Yeah, in a lot of ways. He burned too bright. Uh, if you have listened to this show, which is going into its 10th season, you will know that David Johnson has a very special place on this show. He was drafted 86th overall in 2015, finished his rookie season as the RB8. He's actually in the Hall of Fame for some of his rookie uh, numbers. 2016, the number one yeah. running back in fantasy. Yes, he was. Burn bright. And we had a lot of fun on the show with David Johnson. Good friend of the show as well. Yep. And then, uh, well, we had Jason's uh, 2017 attempt at singing the David <laughs> – Johnson song, <laughs> which you can go see it on Mike's. Uh, on yeah, Mike's. I, I, a, a fan of the show was kind enough to share it, so I retweeted. But it was, it's one of the best moments of the show. Jason tried to sing, and it didn't work. So it was, it was funny. <laughs> but his 2016 year was an all-timer, the second best PPR season for a running back since 07. Yeah, so like over the last 15-plus years. That's crazy. Yeah. McCaffrey yeah. has three of the top seven. Yeah, it does. The, man, the, the the 2016 David Johnson season was so much fun. He just he looked unstoppable, and we yeah. will we will re remember his career fondly. It, it, we'll bid you it a fond farewell. Yeah, it. I mean it it went it went quickly, but but the man he gave us some some fantasy goodness. The man got some shmoney. Yeah, I so. traded for him right before 2017. Yeah, right? you did. And then yeah, he you did. Broke his hand, I think, in that in that Lions yeah. game. Yep. And uh, scored 10 points on the season. So that didn't work out. <laughs> but it was uh, it was a fun ride. We wish you the best, DJ. And uh, man, it's tough. You're you, you're a running back, and you you work your whole life. You get like four years, and then yep. you, you work four more years to get like a shot at doing anything. He did play for Houston for a couple of seasons. Pretty decent the first year in Houston. Yeah, not too bad. And then uh, that's it. So the NFL schedule released last week, Mike. Um, I I like to make fun of the schedule release because it's a schedule release. Yep. That's the main reason I make yep. fun of it is it's a release of the schedule, mm -hmm. and then it's built up like it's, you know, a theme park ride. Yeah, and there's – But then I realize after it happens, I'm like, ah, oh, there's a lot of cool insights to yeah. this. Yeah, the, the thing – where you know I'm trying to look at some stuff where we're getting all of our tools ready for the the ultimate draft kit, looking at strength of schedule, and the thing that that jumped out to me was Jared Goff and the Detroit Lions opened the season with two home games, and Kyle it was the Rams and the Bucks. I want to make sure I'm remembering correct. It correct. Yeah, Rams and the Bucks at home, they will be favored, and it's just like. There is there is an ejector seat in all single quarterback drafts that is Jared Goff. That no matter what your plan like if your plan gets completely torpedoed, whoever, you know, when you were targeting a, a quarterback in the draft, Jared Goff is going to be sitting there for you. Settle for on golf. Just just two weeks of what should be magic. Because Goff at home in when he is favored, he has he just he comes through. It's like a, uh, you know, you do scientific experiments when you're growing up in school, uh -huh. and it was like, under the right conditions, this amount of sunlight <laughs> and this kind of fertilizer, yep. life grows, and golf needs the right situation, and it works out. Also, we have two weeks at the end of the year, week 12 and 14, so I guess we skipped 13 there, where we have six teams on by towards the end of the year. So, you know, I, I'm fine with that, personally. To have the bipocalypse is late, but yeah, I, I wish I had more insight into like how do we have so week seven the Cowboys and the Bears yeah week eight everyone plays week nine the Forty ers and the Steelers and then you have these weeks where six teams are on by I mean the, honestly with with so many fantasy relevant players on both Dallas and San Francisco in particular and you could even throw the Bears in there potentially this year. 
the fact that there aren't a lot of teams on by those weeks means that those upper echelon players, you have better pivot options potentially. Right. The other side of the coin is your opponent might not have a buy and you might have a buy with those players. So um, all of our strength of schedule, tool, uh, information, um, you can break that down in the UDK and you can break it up into different chunks. We obviously use the data that we have from last year and there's a lot of turnover and those things get updated throughout the year as well. And then uh, this is in here. I'm fine with it. Yeah. In here. Yeah. Uh, good news, Mike. The Pittsburgh Post-Gazette reports Najee Harris has uh, changed his diet and his workout routine to get him into the best shape of his life before the 2024 season, which, you know what? I got to hand it to him. Waiting three years to do this. You know, year four is the year when it's a contract season. Yeah, I agree. It's it's kind of funny to have gotten to this point for this to now happen, but I love it. It's part of my, part of my ethos is when a running back cuts weight before the season – I'm excited about it. I think he desperately needed to do this. If he indeed, Oh, he's he's playing he for his career. Did this, I mean, he's going to sit there as one of those down to the wire on draft day decisions, I think, for fantasy players. Yeah, where that's fair. How does camp go? Like you talk about uh, we, I guess we haven't mentioned it a lot this year. Draft as late as you humanly can. Yeah. Our draft this year in League of Record for the first time ever is going to be before Thursday night football. And get as much information from camp and the way that this, you know, Arthur Smith offense is going to look because Najee's sitting there as a potential very high upside yeah, player. I'm, He's also a high risk player because Jalen Warren exists. Yep. I'm leaving the light not on. We'll go uh, partially dimmed. <laughs> this is the, not for, the fridge light, though. No, no. It's, okay. I, I think there is a chance that, that Najee – is I mean just where he's going to be going in the draft you're not drafting him to be like the stud of your team you're just drafting him to be a part of it and will it work with Arthur Smith and this is like for his career if Najee Harris has a a good season yeah he'll go get then, a job then I well I think that the, if he has a good season I think the outcome is he get a mid-level contract he comes back to the Pittsburgh Steelers if he has a bad season I mean, it's it's AJ it, Dillon for life. It'll be yeah, it'll be over. I have to read this quote. Okay. Um, this is from Mark uh, Cavalli on X, Mike X. Okay. The cool place to be. Yep. So this is a, a senior Steelers writer for the Athletic. Give me the quote. What I hear coming out of Steelers camp is that, or out of the Steelers, is that players absolutely love Arthur Smith's offense. One told me that it is unreal. It is. <laughs> I mean, we're in agreement. It is unreal. Oh, man. It's unreal how how wild it can get. No and, one sees it coming. Yeah, Atlanta fans can attest to the unreal <laughs> nature of it. So any other news that you guys have seen that you want to talk about? Anybody back there in Deucer's Alley? No? No, sir. Did you guys ever figure out how many how many characters in a tweet? Kyle was right. It's 140. 140. And then it went to 240. And, In 2017. And now, now it's everything. You can do whatever you want there. On, it's X. On X. It's X. You can do what you want. It's time to mock draft. The Fantasy Footballers Mock Draft. Well, it is a head-to-head -head mock draft. We had randomly selected draft spots and we were assigned the two and three spot i have the two mike with the three we're drafting a 12 team half ppr one quarterback two running back two wide receiver one tight end one flex four bench and uh i've already clicked start on the draft and christian mccaffrey's off the board okay no surprises and so sitting at number two mike at number three very interesting to go through this exercise for the first time in a while. First time since rookies have been a part of this, uh, the equation, right? We did a very early mock draft, early rankings, but now we've done our player projections and we get to go ahead and jump in. And that, that's what mock drafting is all about. It's about experimenting with different philosophies, plans, game plans, see how things work out. So, you know, I think this is a place where a lot of people are going to have a tough decision to make in general with, upper echelon wide receivers and CD lamb, Tyree kill Jamar chase. And then that next tier of running back behind Christian McCaffrey, 
you know, Brees Hall, Bijan, Jameer Gibbs, and so on. My philosophy has not changed in recent years. I I want to find the backbone of my team at the running back position. Okay. Um, I I recognize that there is, I think, less risk to taking a Tyreek Hill or a CeeDee Lamb here, but that is not what I'm going to do. I'm going to take my number two overall running back with this selection, and I'm going to kick off uh, my roster here with Brees Hall. Okay. Brees Hall at number two. I didn't. I had no idea which direction you were going to go because at least last. You're talking positionally. Or yeah, just, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, positionally. Last year, you know the we the community. We really only had the faith in Christian McCaffrey. So it was like it was McCaffrey, and then there was a run. There was some Eckler. Oh yeah, no, yeah, there was, there was the Eckler. There okay, okay, yeah. I couldn't remember who it was. It was it was Eckler. We've tried to forget, but and, it was indeed Eckler. And then there was a huge run of uh, wide receivers, which I will start the run. It, it, okay. Uh, between it come to me it's it's Tyree Kill or CeeDee Lamb and it CeeDee Lamb he's currently my number two wide receiver I really didn't think he would be um that just that's where the projections brought him into I he's I, number two for you and I and I think Jason has him at one okay I mean he look he was an absolute monster last year so maybe you know what I'm saying a guy who had 135 catches almost 1800 yards and 12 touchdowns it was just it, because the run was so incredibly hot from the when the tr the the change happened really basically since the bye week. Just how can this possibly continue? And you when when you really dive into Dallas and everything that they have done this season or during the off season, I don't know how it doesn't that's keep, what, or at least attempts to I don't, keep it going. I, I again, I always have focused with CD Lamb on the fact that yes, he had a great run to end the year, but it's not to end the year. It was week six on. That's five weeks where it wasn't great, right? And the rest of the entire year, that's you know two thirds of the season. But it, wait, it's just so that I just wanted to talk that's CD in, real quick. In but your I am, thought process, I am still going to take Tyreek at number uh, one hundred and three. So you'll stick with your rankings yep. there. So you went wide out. I went running back. CeeDee Lamb goes four, Jefferson five. Holy wide receivers. Chase six. I think you're going to see that a lot. Team seven took Bijan, and then you go Amon Ra and A.J. Brown. So six out of seven to finish. Um, oh, no, nope, I just didn't have the screen over enough. Okay. <laughs> wow. I was like, this is not an eight-team draft. So, yeah, we went Tyreek, CeeDee, Jefferson, Chase, one running back in there, Bijan. And then Amon Ra, A.J. Brown, Puka Nakua, Garrett Wilson, Marvin Harrison. So Harrison goes in the first, and you have, what is that, nine wide receivers and one running back after your pick, Mike? Yeah, it's – That's crazy. That's a wild run. It, it makes me feel good about taking the wide receiver, but the – Makes me feel terrible about taking the running back. <laughs> I was going to say, the the tier, though, of running back, uh, it it is pretty – dried up already just with with the handful of names who are gone and Marvin Harrison going in the first man are you are you look comfortable I'm, with that I want to look at where who he was taking over so yeah, I'll, sure. I'll read you the second round and then we'll talk about it after Harrison you got a run on running backs which by the way Jameer Gibbs ends up in the second round here Saquon Gibbs Kyron Taylor and those four players I could see a lot of fantasy players not knowing which one's going to outperform the other putting them in the same bucket and that's why the priority on wide receivers might have happened. Then Devontae Adams, Drake London, Josh Allen goes 207, Olave and Ayuk. So a lot of wide receivers off the board. So, yeah, Harrison over Adams, I'm cool with that. That's fine. Harrison over London, fine with that. Olave, Ayuk, yeah, not a big deal. Harrison in the first isn't going to happen very often because Taylor, Kyron, Gibbs, or Barkley, one of those or two of those guys are going to go in the first most often. And then you would have been talking Harrison somewhere in the first part of the second round or the middle second round. So the run on wide receivers is what changed that to me. I I don't think he's in the wrong spot. It's, I mean, that puts him at nine, and he's ranked in my rankings at nine it's at just, wide receivers. It's, it's so tough. So I'm on the clock here. But I can't imagine taking him over like Gibbs. Right. Like it happened okay. in this draft. Uh, at the running back position, is we have HN here, Josh Jacobs, Travis Etienne, King Henry, so I mean it's it's kind of a tier of players that I feel like with my short turn I can choose to pass on that. 
And at the wide receiver position, Stephon Diggs and his name power is pulling himself up here at the top. Pittman is – I don't know if he's in consideration. He Evans is, he's after, not, no. Evans after last year? Nope. It, for this point of the draft with the wide receivers available, for me, it's Nico Collins or Debo Samuel. I have Debo higher in my projections. I think that they are both riskier players uh, at this point. I, I think you could – take a safer pick because there's look there's a chance that Nico had the best year of his career and there's and Debo just he he fluctuates up and down but I'm gonna go Debo I'm gonna stick with my rankings here I started with Tyreek and Debo and I am pretty happy about that yeah so Tyreek and Debo Samuel I'm I have Brees Hall here you mentioned HN my running back five is still on the board and there are seven running backs running gone. Back five. Yeah, Travis Etienne is my running back oh, okay. five. Okay, all right. I don't love Diggs. I don't. Yeah, universally, the we're all pretty lower on Diggs than what seems to be out the there. The wide receivers have thinned so dramatically already in this draft. There are 14 wide receivers off the board. So, you know, I'm going to take my RB5, and I'm a quick turn here. So I'll take what's left a wide receiver or look okay. at my other options. It might even be as high as going a Jalen Hurts. We'll see. Um, and you'll find out right after we come back. All right. My cats, Tyree killed Debo Samuel with his first two picks. I went Brees Hall and Travis Etienne with my first two picks, opting for Etienne over the more volatile Devon Achan based on my rankings and – a, a chan is just it's, I just it's the worst it's the worst i just feel like the potential for disappointment is tremendous oh it's, it's massive <laughs> it's 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 ridiculous Humongous, right yeah the the risk on a chan is is outrageous the risk of not picking a chan is just as outrageous that's what i'm saying the i know the situation is i can't he's he has to be like amongst the the most exciting players to find out what actually happens in in 2024. So, A Chan and Diggs went next and I'm back on the clock and I have a long long wait. All the tight ends are still available. So, Mr. First Round Travis Kelsey is sitting there in the third. McBride and LaPorta in third. Here's what I'm looking at at wide receivers. Tell me if you agree with this. There's a bunch of names that, you know, the sleeper ADP has near the top, like Nico Collins and DJ Moore, Mike Evans. Evans is the next highest on my rankings. But then if you were to go down a ways and you look at the Devontae Smiths or DK Metcalfs, I think those guys could be um, maybe in a very similar tier as the names that are way up high. I mean, Waddle's still there and Pittman. Uh, so I, I'm very tempted to test the waters on seeing what kind of wide receiver comes back around to me. And take what? Well, I could, are go, you, are you going I could go IT. I could go Jalen Hurts. Okay. I could go Travis Kelsey. Or I could go back to running back and go high T with a Derrick Henry. Do you still have Kelsey as your number one? Travis Kelsey is sitting at one. Okay. Is he your number one? He is not. Who's your number one? Laporta? Uh scoring format matters. Kate Otten? It, it's, bet <laughs> <laughs> it's between my guy, Trey McBride, and Mark Andrews. At number one, mm -hmm. and uh, that's so that's that's pretty different. The numbers are the numbers, my man. I well, look, I guess I didn't know what your numbers yeah. were. So, I got that old man, that old busted tight end at number three, Travis Kelsey. Yeah, where's Evan Ingram? <laughs> what? Why are we jumping right to Evan Ingram? It's the third round. Because I want to know where you disrespected him compared to me. <laughs> Your guy? Your guy, Schmangrum? Schmang well, not just mine. Jay Grizz loves him, too. Uh, yeah, I have him currently at number five. Do you? Yeah. Wait, where Where do you have? Now it's just a tight end <laughs> no, it's situation. it's just my tight end. Where's four. Laporta? Four. Oh, okay. All right. That seems fine. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, all right. I got him at tight end 13. I'm really having a hard time. You here. are struggling. I really am. I've been time. I'm just talking about, about other stuff. 
Don't worry about my draft pick. I want to talk about Mike's tight end rankings. I'm going to take Jalen Hurts. Okay. I'm going to take Jalen Hurts okay. at 302. Because I have Allen and Hurts in their own in their own space ahead of Mahomes and ahead of Dak and Lamar. So I didn't have to be the first to take one. I, I take the last one in the top tier in the third round. And I'm going to see how it, how it rolls. I've got a lot of consistency in ETN and Brees Hall. I hate what you have done to me. Okay. Because there was my, my my draft was it's two players. Okay. It's Isaiah Pacheco, who I love this year. He like he's he is firmly inside my top ten. I think that he should be he should see workhorse usage. And assuming the Kansas City Chiefs don't bring back McKinnon, like shock us with something with a late addition. If you get Pacheco more involved in the passing game, which he was already seeing some work towards the end of last year, I think he could be an incredible pick. And he's got juice. And then you have Rashad White, who drafting him in the third round, despite what my rankings are telling me to do, that feels terrible. You have a long wait like I do. I'm taking a running back Yeah, here. you have to. I now just, you have Der you got Derrick Henry sitting there too. Yeah, he's he's a little bit lower than these other guys. Cause yeah. I, I, uh, Pacheco and Rashad White, to me, will see, will see three down usage. Uh, it, Rashad White, I mean – I they, point it I'm, out because I think a lot of people are going to be sitting there in this situation with the big name of Derrick Henry. And passing on Derrick Henry for some of these other players may be difficult. I, I like Derrick. He's He is my running back 10, but Rashad White is at 7, Pacheco's at 9, and I'm just more confident in their usage. Uh, but so for, for White, yeah, they brought back Chase Edmonds and uh, the rookie Bucky Irving is there. So maybe he – Sean Tucker. Maybe saw he saw a hype video yeah, of him too. I – the the Sean Tucker that's it feels like that's past now, uh. But oh god, all right. I'm taking Rashad White. That's so disgusting. Um. So you're you're <laughs> actually just you're kind of unhappy with how it feels. Yeah. And it it it, it felt RB one Rashad White. It felt Rashad great. White, if truth you or Mike right. him. Last year it would have been incredible, but I just Mike it, Wright and Rashad White. Yeah. Yep. Partners in crime. Laporta goes next. So the the tight ends were going to go off the board. Then Evans, Henry, Kelsey, Nico. Jacobs goes at 309. He'll be a very polarizing pick. Malik Neighbors at 310. Neighbors would have been somebody I would have loved to have slipped. But we are drafting at the front of these rounds, and it's a long wait. Lamar goes next. Then DJ Moore rounding out the third round. Pittman, Waddle, Mahomes, Pacheco. Not too far from Pacheco falling to you, Mike. Yeah, that would have been awesome. Stroud goes next, and then four wideouts just to twist the knife in my decision-making. <laughs> Cup, <laughs> Devontae Smith, Flowers, and Keenan Allen, which puts you back on the clock. You have Tyreek, Debo, and Rashad White. So looking at what's happening right now, Trey McBride and Mark Andrews are both still there it's pretty appealing to go after one of them. I have the short weight uh, strategy wise. I would look at like what, what you guys have done, what, what the edge has done. Andy already took a quarterback. That's not going to stop you from getting a tight end, but I thought you were going to say that's not going to stop me from taking a <laughs> second quarterback. I was like, yes, it will. <laughs> that will stop me. I'd, I'd put that close to 0% okay. of, of a second right. quarterback, but, but going with a onesie and how long you have to wait, it would be, a a bold decision for your Atlanta for wanted your me to take <laughs> a second quarterback. By the way, their GM just called Dude, me just they in said, case. Just in case my first guy goes down. Uh, so th those are two you going tight onesie? No, oh, I'm just I'm trying to work through it. Those two tight ends are there, but then at the running back position, Kenneth Walker is he's still available. Still there. I it's hard for me to like. It, it wasn't great. Cook. It wasn't great last year for Walker, but he's still young and has. Just upside each and every week, but the I mean the rest of the running backs are okay as well. So I mean let's. I think I know what my next pick wanted to be though. So I don't know. Whatever, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> well, you're not. You got to give some names to the. To well, the I listeners. don't. Oh yeah, you took your quarterback. Yeah, it's it's Anthony Richardson. I, in I the was, fourth. It, no, it, with my next pick. Oh in the fifth. yeah, yeah yeah. I won't take him. I promise. But. <laughs> but. 
Now, like I'm weighing that, that's part of the way you, you don't want team it. one to hear you. That's part of weighing it with the the tight ends. Like if I take you can't go double onesie is what you're not going to do. I I don't want to because then Rashad White is just your guy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's that seems terrible. But maybe we'll do it anyways. Whatever. I'm going to take uh, I'm going to take Trey McBride. Trey McBride. All right, off the board. Let's find out what happens. Uh, Mike Mike's immediate reaction went to like intently glancing at Ugh. the board. Look, I love how this has dropped for me. Um, there are, I would say. Three wideouts that I'm very cozy with right here. And so I'm going to take DK Metcalf with the first pick. And then I'm going to see Mark Andrews go and Tank Dell go. And I'm back on the clock, and it's T. Higgins, Amari Cooper. Those are the two names. Right now I have uh, T. Higgins. Let me see how close you. They're both very close. Oh, are they? they it's not close for me. Uh, you have Higgins higher? Yeah. Yeah, I do have uh, – I've got them very close. Pickens is there just to fill out the names that I would be looking at. You know, Pickens I think will have a, a level of probably underdrafted nature to him. Pickens is very interesting to me at this point. And uh, there's one other name that I think will be uh, – it looks to be underdrafted based on current ADP. But I think Calvin Ridley is going to be very under. And th this is the the challenge for me right now in this draft is I actually have Calvin Ridley ranked higher than I do T. Higgins. Yeah. But Calvin Ridley's ADP right now is way down. Well, there, there's also just like rankings are – the way I use my, my, my rankings and my projections, it's a guide for me. Like the, the projections is you're looking at a more of a median outcome of more so than projecting or statting out yeah. a true outlier season. Like that's why we have uh, in our rankings, that's why we have our risk rating and that's why we have our upside ranking because there's there's some players you just – you can't give them – like I mean, even guys like Tyreek Hill, it's like statting a guy out for 1,700 receiving yards, that feels pr – Pretty wild. It feels like you're just like, I'm not, I'm not being realistic and yet – they do hit those marks, so that's what that, that, that's the difference so, between the rankings and the upside. To say to say all that, I'm not going wide receiver after looking at this board. Oh, I'm gonna wait because there is a chance that Calvin Ridley, who I would love to have as my wide receiver too, comes back to me, and I think there's some other interesting names down that list that I'm comfortable with. But what I can't get is my RB nine in the fifth round, unless I take James Cook right here, and that is what wow. I'm gonna do. James RB9? Cook in the fifth round. You just want to be disappointed? I have him ranked at RB9 just behind Rashad White. You had to take Rashad White at 303. Yeah. I just got James Cook at 5-2. Well, that's because he's way lower in my rankings. Oh, and they're using yours? Yeah. Look, um, there you go. DK Metcalf. I think I can get Calvin Ridley next round. I'm going to play that gamble. See if he gets through well, me. Well, he might not get through you, but uh, <laughs> don't. And – now, now that I had some time to to sit on the the thought process, if I took Trey McBride in the fourth, I do really want Anthony Richardson. I, I want you won't get him if you don't. I take want exposure him here. to him, but I got Trey McBride and our other like big value quarterback at this moment is Kyler Murray. And you're gonna try to wait for him? Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna wait for Kyler. Try to get that stack going on. And I just the running backs are about to go to the phantom zone. So I am going to take Kenneth Walker. Kenneth Walker is a great pick there. Thank I'm you. So impressed with you. Uh, Kenneth Walker, James Cook in the fifth round. Those are those seem like wild values to me. Burrow goes next, then Kincaid, Higgins, Kamara, Mixon, Pitts, Pickens, Connor, and Kittle to finish the fifth round. Aaron Jones at six oh one. What's your reaction to Aaron Jones at six oh one? Dude, he is. He is one of those real mystery players. Of, I I think that, I think that Aaron Jones still has juice left, despite him being at the age where he should not for the running back position. I'm on the and other side. I think that the beginning well, of the end has happened. I'm saying I I think he has juice, but I just I I think we're we've talked a little <laughs> bit about it, but that we're in agreement that Ty Chandler will will get more run than people are yes, counting on for right sure, now for sure. So Aaron Jones to me, kind of it feels like a more uninspiring pick. I don't know that it's bad, but just 
you know, sometimes you want to draft guys where you really believe that the the true upside is there. So they, I'm, I'm more more of a pass on Aaron Jones, but in the sixth, I don't think it's terrible. Amari Cooper, Roma Dunze, Anthony Richardson, Mike, he is gone. Rash Rashi yeah. Rice in the sixth right now. Montgomery, Ingram, my tight end three. J uh, Jordan Love and DeAndre Swift. I think that's a good pick at 609, DeAndre Swift. And then, Mike, you're back on the clock right now with Tyreek and Debo, Rashad White and Kenneth Walker, Trey McBride, and do you gamble – I am with I, Kyler Murray. I'm going to gamble one more time because I know you won't take him. Uh, Dak. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> Dak is sitting at the top of the ADP. Not that that is every. I mean, it's it's a one player buffer, so it is certainly playing with. It's playing a little bit of a dangerous game there. Uh, I'm trying to look over at my wide receiver rankings to see who I would like to take at this point, and. I mean, I get he is he's at the top of the ADP and at, he's at the top of the rankings where I would want to take. I'm going to take Christian Kirk. I think that that Kirk is. I think he's being undervalued for like the yes the big splash. Gabe Davis is there. Uh, Brian Thomas is there. I like Brian Thomas a lot. Yeah, I I don't I think he's a fine player, but it's like Christian Kirk. Tried and true. He's just he is established. I mean, we had the week one disaster. Of last year, and then Christian. Do you Kirk have your rankings up? Your, yeah, with your stat projections. Yeah, I can pull. Them I want to. I'm curious how many total fantasy points you have. Christian Kirk projected four and a half point. One ninety four. Okay, I've got I've got him at one seventy. So, so I like him a bit more. Yeah, and I got Brian Thomas at one ninety. So I actually like Brian Thomas more. What you're you're taking Brian Thomas to be their wide receiver one? Well, did, I think that's a difference of. Semantics a little bit. Oh, for for, for, for fantasy. The, fantasy, the highest production. scoring fantasy yes. wide. Yes, I do. Wow. Yeah, I, I don't. That, I, I don't have that at all. Clearly. <laughs> hey, guess what? I do have Calvin Ridley though. He goes at six eleven, alongside Metcalf as my wide receiver too. I think Ridley's gonna have a great. Oh no! <laughs> oh no! Um. Oh no! Uh, Mike is screeching because he took Christian. I Kirk. took Christian Kirk. What a stupid pick! And Kyler Murray goes after Chris, uh, after Calvin Ridley, and he loses out because he gives me a big talk about Christian Kirk. You know how boring that Christian Kirk pick was compared to getting your that st pick sucks. <laughs> your stack, that pick is terrible. <gasps> oh, team one is actually uh, is actually Jay Grizz. What in the world? So Kyler Murray. What are you doing, Team One? They needed a quarterback. I'm sh I'm shocked you didn't take him. They also had the onesie position. Nice. Uh, Xavier Worthy mm -hmm. goes next. What a load of crap! <laughs> <laughs> and I I'm back on the clock. Gosh darn it! <laughs> that is so upsetting. Yeah, you don't get your stack at all. Uh, I have Brees Hall, Travis Etienne. And James Cook at running back, Jalen Hurts at quarterback, Metcalf and Ridley. And I can come back to the wide receiver position again here, which is what I'm looking to do. And I'm going to take Brian Thomas. I'm going to take the better of the two wide receivers. The one You took the For one in, that, instead of Kyler, and then I'm taking Brian Thomas now. I've, we can put that one on the board. Oh, do we want to do you, it? Please, please. You, you, don't have the, uh, you didn't like Brian Thomas very much anyway, right? I thought he was okay. I Let's do it. <laughs> Water bet. I'm in love with Brian Thomas. I think he's going to immediately be their, their guy. Okay. Well, let, let, let me let me ask you this question. If okay. Calvin Ridley was still in Jacksonville mm -hmm. and nothing had changed, would you have taken Kirk or Ridley? Uh, man, I haven't really haven't put thought into that. I probably yeah, because it's a hypothetical. So if you had put thought into it, that would have been a weird thing to have done. Well, sometimes people have a nice thought experiment. Um. It would have been really close. I probably would have gone Calvin Ridley just for because a, a bit more upside. Yeah, and so that that's the the fact that you're even there in that discussion is that's how I view Brian Thomas. But I, uh, but I, I think the, but Calvin Ridley, I know that he's good, and the and I mean like see all that money he. Got? I know Brian Thomas is good. Ooh, so uh, I know he's I know he's a good college player. If if it matters to you, he's third in total receptions. Does that make you feel any better? Evan Ingram's number one on my list. Okay. Christian Kirk. 80 receptions. Brian Thomas, 74, but for 1,200 yards. Ooh. 
And I think Brian Thomas is a monster. So we'll see. Look, okay. he may, you know, we can talk about it a lot. And now we have a bet. So uh, here you're up again, and I'm sure you're taking Kyler. <laughs> it would have been great. It would have been great. So what did we learn today, Mike? Christian Kirk is not the answer is what we learned. Uh, yeah, when you when you have the chance for the stack, don't throw it away for Christian Kirk. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the lesson. Look, yeah, I'm, I'm a gambling man sometimes, and uh, that is unfortunately uh, when you gamble, you can lose. Yes, <laughs> you can. Uh, Otherwise, it wouldn't the, be called gambling. Most of the time. I'm going to give you a second to think here. Okay. We'll take another quick break and come back with uh, what looks to be your seventh pick in this draft. All right, um, I just got word from Team One, Mike. Very <laughs> pleased with their pick of yeah. Kyler Murray. Okay, great value at six twelve. I'm so happy for them. You have uh, Tyreek Hill, Debo Samuel, and then Christian Kirk as at your wide receiver position. Rashad White, Kenneth Walker, and then Trey McBride. You're on the clock here with your third pick in the seventh round. So the the wide receivers to me were were in a looking for upside. Uh, you know, just hoping you're going to get some volume, guys that. I don't like have full confidence and love. I get it, really every position is that, but there's the tier of wide receivers to me. They're they're grouped together. So give me some think, names that you don't have confidence and love. Uh, well, I'm just saying like Hollywood I, Brown. I can, I can push and wait. Terry McLaurin. Yeah, Deontay Johnson. Maybe he gets that Adam Thielen target share that that started last year for Carolina. Uh, Jackson Smith and Jigba is still a very talented wide receiver. What about rookie consideration here? Do you like Lad McConkey? Do you like? Um, Keon Coleman's opportunity as the one potentially yeah, in that's, Buffalo. Uh, all those guys are are have have a level of interest to me. And then over at the running back position, <clears throat> excuse me, I would I guess most is there as well. Most are sitting there. But I would narrow it down into uh Tony Pollard, who got the money from Tennessee, and despite the massive uh sadness that he caused for the fantasy football community. The second half, he was a much better player. Just watching him, uh, watching him on the field, you you still didn't get what you wanted for fantasy, but I think there is a chance that he is, you know, sixty plus percent of Tennessee. And what it, and it's kind of the game. What if Tennessee's offense? What if it works? All the money and the investment that they've put into it. Najee, eh, I'm okay with it here. But then the other name who is fascinating to me is Zamir White for the Las Vegas Raiders of this is a just, player that we have a massive disparity right, of of opinion, opinion. yeah and Jason and I are on one side Mike is on the other side of you're on the bullish side of Zamir White I'm I'm like he's he's not again he's not projected it's a chance to add a second player there. with the last name of White to your roster does that oh, okay. change your opinion no <laughs> but but uh maybe I mean he, it's funny that but you could be well. I have Rashad White and I have Zamir White, and I'm like, kind of, kind of feels a little gross for both of them. Um, but like the, the, the workload that Josh Jacobs got last year, inefficient as he was, he was still getting crazy amounts of volume. And then Zamir got that exact same volume when he took over for the last four games of the season. He was far better than Josh Jacobs. The competition right now is Zamir White and Alexander Madison. So, so you're thinking Madison here, <laughs> obviously. But the like, does Zamir White are, are we are are we set up for him to be 65 plus percent workhorse? And it, we just so a a problem. So philosophically, just thinking about these running backs going here is we don't I, we don't know yet is Zamir White good or bad. Right, like I don't think we've seen enough of him on the field to make an assessment. In my opinion, and look, I agree with that, and I just hope it is applied to the last four games. That reality, yeah, no, but it's it, it's it could be there. And when you're in the dead zone, you don't don't be drafting players where you, where you feel like I know that that he's not a great player. Yeah, that's that's no, what no, I'm no, saying. No, I get it. I get it. So, so and, who's who's going to be your I'm gonna, selection here? I'm going to go. I'm going to go as Demir White. I'm going to take him in the seventh. I think that's a, a pretty good value for a starting running back. It became a run of running backs after that. Ramondre, Najee, Javante. Then Dak goes, so you don't get him either. Uh, McLaurin, Addison. Don't worry, bro. My, th 
My my thumb is on the button. This is the first time I've ever seen Hollywood Brown's name in there as Hollywood on Sleeper. Do you see this? Wait. They officially did it? Look at 710. Hollywood Brown goes. H. Brown. I've never seen that in my life. Uh, Jaden Reed goes at 711. Honestly, Jaden Reed probably would have been my pick instead of Brian Thomas, according to my rankings, but I wanted to talk about Brian Thomas, so I drafted sure. him. Uh, <laughs> Caleb Williams goes 712. Godwin Pollard, Moser Chubb. That'll be an interesting player to watch. Bowers, Watson, Deontay Johnson, Eckler, and then Hopkins. So I am – oh, you're on the clock, actually. I am on the Zemir clock. Zemir White uh, was your last pick, and you're back on the clock. And I, I feel great because the the uh, the wide receiver tier did not get completely destroyed. Uh, you, you might be looking at my team saying, I still don't have a quarterback. Uh, and I think every single other team has one. I was looking at your team, and I was thinking – this guy don't have a quarterback. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And some of these some of the, some of the bots here it it is very possible that they take a second quarterback. But I I think I'm okay at least for this pick. Let's find out, shall we? Oh let's, my god. Let's run it back, baby. Uh So who are you taking? I'm going to take Keon Coleman. Yeah, that, I will I will take the rookie yeah. from Buffalo. Look, I, JSN is in strong contention right there. But it's the what if, what if Coleman is the number one wide receiver for Buffalo? What if that happens? Uh, like I, I honestly, I think that there is a, I think there's a strong chance that it ends up being Curtis Samuel. But I'm going to take the risk right here on the rookie, as uh, because because if that hits, that's that's a just a monster pick in the eighth. It's a great pick. I love Keon Coleman. I love him on film. My pick here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna not do what you did. There's one there there's an uh, my uh, my tight end 6 my tight end 6 is available and he's available well, how many are off the board now that's uh 9 9 have gone off the board he's my tight end 6 and he had an incredible finish to the season last year yeah is he did he get that quarterback back no, oh, no but i'm taking david that's weird. i'm taking david Njoku here uh -huh. knowing that I'm going to lose a couple picks and then I'm back on the clock. McConkey and Romeo Dobbs go next. So JSN's on the board for me. When I look at wide receivers, uh, Xavier Legat, uh, Troy Franklin. Which, no. which, which but we did. That is straight from the man. Yes, it is Legat. He says it's Legat. That's how we will be pronouncing it. Jalen Warren, Jonathan Brooks. Those are both interesting names. Yes. Uh, those are probably finalists right now. Devin Singletary, a starter. Gus Edwards. Yeah. A starter. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I haven't taken a running back while well, James Cook in the fifth. Man. <laughs> um, Because I think I have, I have a lot of strength in Brees Hall, Etienne, and Cook. So I'm going to go for the upside here. And I'm going to give Jonathan Brooks a shot. I'm going to take Brock, okay, Jonathan Brooks in the ninth round. Instead of going with like a committee back that's never going to crack the roster, I'm going to go with a player that I want to see if they can emerge, get involved in the passing game of Dan Cana uh, of Dave Canales, and uh, that puts you back on the clock. JSN still available. Jonathan Brooks there, I think, is worth it. Of uh, your your team is strong at the running back position. Coming off the ACL tear, who knows when Brooks will be available, but it should it should be his job when he's ready to go. So I I don't mind that there. The running back situation at this point is really interesting of And you still that, need a quarterback. Uh, yeah, Jared Goff will be We're going to make you draft one. Jared Goff will be, will be here soon. Zach Moss Oh man, I can't wait till he goes. <laughs> cannot wait. Well, let's look. Brock Purdy, Tua, Jared Goff, Jaden oh, Daniels, all going before your Justin next Herbert. I mean the if Trevor Lawrence is your starting quarterback, I will rejoice and sing songs. He will not be. He will not be my starting right. quarterback. But that that's five that's five quarterbacks that I am happy to start to go into week one at least with. Uh but Zach Moss on the Bengals. Yeah. With it, it's that one's hard too. Because like is it okay, Andy. Chase Brown. Yeah. Is but no. Is Zach Moss good or bad? As a running back, yeah, he's mid. Okay, he's so a, he's a medium. He'll he's a get you by guy. 
That's what I'm going to call it. Okay. Zamir White, get your bye guy. That's what these guys do. They're they're durable enough to make it through a season and smart enough to run through through the holes presented, but they don't they don't make big plays and they aren't the reason you win. Is how do you feel about Joe Mixon? Like his talent level now. I still think he is superior to those two players. Samir by White. by what margin? Not much. Okay. They did that was so that's the question of it and if if Zach Moss is anything close to what Joe Mixon was able to give the Cincinnati Bengals, what was Mixon's finish yet last year? Five? Like it Or wait, no, that's too high. I don't think that's too was high. Was that what it was? I mean we're, we're five. Five we're, five on the dot. We're factoring in running uh, week eighteen in that because he was the running back four. But yeah, running was back that Kyle five, chiming in there? It was. Now was, how is your emphysema, Kyle? <laughs> Have you getting that treated? Trying to cut back. Okay, on the on the stay safe. Yeah. Get under ten packs a day. It's like, dude, the running back the running back five. Yeah, I know. And that opportunity is available. And Gus Edwards, it's the same thing of Jim Hardog and the high T approach that him and G Row are going to be putting out there. It's not about he, here's the difference. Okay. The difference between Joe Mixon and those two players is commitment. It's the fact that if Joe Mixon plays bad, he's the he was still the guy in Cincinnati. If Zach Moss plays bad, he's not. If Zamir White plays bad, he's not. That's the only difference between those two players. Is that you could lose the spot. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you definitely could. That's the upside. Um and uh I'm gonna I'm gonna risk. I wanted JSN on my team last round, so I'm gonna go ahead and yeah. I'm gonna take him here. Wasn't an option for me with Metcalf already on the yeah, roster. I get that. Ferguson Purdy goes. Moss, Benson, Warren, Edwards, Gus in the ninth, nice value. Goddard, uh -oh. Hawkinson. Uh oh. Adonai Mitchell. Uh oh. Jamison Williams. Oh, come on. <laughs> yes. <laughs> For those listening, Jared Goff goes one pick before Mike. Two is two is already off the come board. On, man. A nice backup quarterback for team four. <laughs> Woo! I dude, <laughs> fool me once, fool me twice. I Trevor had to Lawrence. Do it. Trevor Lawrence should be your quarterback at a penalty. I had to do it. Jared Goff, Tua, and Purdy all go before your pick, Mike. You are back on the clock. You can roll the dice with uh, Herbert and the high T offense. You can shut your mouth. I'm taking Jaden Daniels. Oh, baby. <laughs> oh, baby. How's it feel not getting any of the quarterbacks you want? You uh... No, Jaden Daniels was in the crew. I, Jared Goff was the one I wanted, but in the list oh, of yeah. – I listed off five. We got there. <laughs> Well, uh, we are. Uh, I got my final two picks here. I'm going to take Xavier Leggett. Okay. Um, so back to back Panthers. That's got to be good, right? And then Spears and Herbert. Yeah, what could go wrong? Off the board, and it's back to me. You know, my I like taking Brooks and and Leggett with the two of my last three picks. A reminder, to everyone out there, you end up dropping a player to participate in the waiver wire. I want to see if I can catch lightning in a bottle for the first couple of weeks. Sure. I don't want to be taking a player that I'm like, oh, ho-hum, they could be good. You know, I could take a player like Ty Chandler, and he could be more involved in week one. And if he's not, I could dump him. That's an option. I could go Tyler Lockett with the final pick of the draft out of pure respect for the man because him going undrafted. What a downfall. What a downfall for, for Tyler Lockett in ADP where I get last year. Yeah, was, I mean, he got paid in this offseason. Last too. year was terrible. For for what we were expecting, not going to argue with that at all. But it was, you're, it maybe like if I guess we're watching Lock and say it's happening. The he he has lost the step. But if he hasn't really lost the step, we're just one year removed from a a, a string of of fantasy dominance. So I won't take him because I have DK Metcalf. Yeah, also makes sense. Zeke is uh, near the top of my list just to take the flyer on what that breakdown looks like in Dallas because it should matter. It's going to be one of the best offenses in football. Um, or you can roll the dice with Rashid Shahid, a wide receiver too there. Uh, Jalen Polk sure. in New England. Uh, that's where I'm going. I'm going Jalen oh, Polk. going Jalen Polk. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to go the double rookies at the end and see if one of them pops off in the beginning and otherwise I'm going to go to the waiver wire and – find the best option. So, Mike, you are on the clock. You can select another quarterback. I think Trevor Lawrence is still there. No, I'm I'm good. I know where I know the direction I'm going cuz you, you've kind of laid out who everybody who was there. This player is no longer a rookie. And this uh, this this counts for double. 
Okay. Because this player last year was drafted to be a, re a number one wide receiver. He was awful. Oh, are, he you, was, are you doing it? He was just awful. And I'm talking about Quentin Johnston. Yeah. The opportunity in front of him is really not one I think we saw coming. Of We, we thought it would be one. It would be Keenan or Mike Williams and Quentin this year. And now it's Quentin and Joshua Palmer. And Lad McConkey. Yeah, and yeah, they did add Lad McConkey. But point being, of, of any veteran experience, it's those guys. And... And if he's bad week one, how good is that drop going to feel? Oh, yeah, double. So if when, he's yeah, good, If, if he's great. good, you're like, I, t I knew it. I, I never doubted him for a moment. If he's terrible week one, that drop with extreme prejudice. Oh, yeah. It's going to feel, feel great. Yeah, it feel great. Cathartic. All right, so uh, we went very different uh, through the first two rounds. I had a couple of running backs. My team looks like this. Brees Hall, Travis Etienne, James Cook, Jonathan Brooks, that was my four running backs. Metcalf, Ridley, Brian Thomas, Leggett, and Polk as my wideouts. Feels a little thin to me, although I think Metcalf and Ridley are enough to get by with those running backs. And Jalen Hurts and David Njoku, my onesie positions at quarterback and tight end. I will be looking immediately for running back help after week one, but I got Tyreek Hill, Debo, Christian Kirk, Keon Coleman, Jackson Smith, and Jigba, and Quentin Johnston. The, my running back crew is very thin. Rashad White, Kenneth Walker, Zamir White. Uh, I have Trey McBride, T. McBee, the man at my tight end position. And then I have Kyler Murray at my quarterback position. Uh, try that again. I have Jared Goff. Nope. No, <laughs> keep going. Okay. We have Jaden Daniels. Oh, man. So uh, how do you think the populace will react to, to Jaden Daniels leading the way? He could be okay. Yeah. J I – you don't have Hon a choice. Honestly, Jaden Daniels is – I think he is a – like. He's just like I, what Richardson was in last year's draft. I Yeah, I don't really want – I don't really want to go into week one with Jaden Daniels as my only hope. I prefer him more as like – The second like, guy you drafted if, if I had the take, last pick. Yeah, if I had gotten Jared Goff at the 10-10 and then the next round got Jaden Daniels, I would feel spectacular about that. All right, well, let us know what you think of our head-to-head uh, -head mock draft if you are over on YouTube Wild, watching. Wild, man. Yeah, it, it was it was fun. I had a good time. It was fun watching all your quarterbacks disappear right before your eyes every time you tried to take is the it, gamble. Is Sleeper listening like uh, Facebook? It's the exact same thing as an Alexa on your like, desk. They, they, can't they hear, hear me you. talking? Yeah, Jay Grizz relays information he hears back to them. Uh, ultimatedraftkit.com head over there right now it releases on June 1st that is 11 days away you do not want to miss your opportunity to jump in there and get ready for your draft from day one and make your league mates uh, just miserable in the middle of their draft so that is going to do it today be back with another episode on Thursday goodbye everybody goodbye Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.